Welcome to Bible 325, the life, teaching, and ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm so excited that you've joined us here at Austin Bible Institute. In this module, we are going to be looking at Jesus Christ, his true purpose, and his true mission. What was the mission of Jesus Christ? What did he come to do? What was he sent on this earth to do? So we're going to look at an introduction to Christ's life and death. Very few people, historians included, will deny that Jesus was a real person. What they deny is what was the significance of his life and his death. They won't push back on that he he was real, but it was what was his purpose, what did he accomplish. Many see him as just a great man, a great moral teacher, a religious leader. But you get pushed back when you start going into theological things. When you start saying that Jesus Christ was God. Then you start to get a little woo now, push back against uh, that teaching. So in order to understand who Jesus is, we have to go to the pages of the Bible. That's why we put such high premium, high value on the Bible here at Austin Bible Institute. This is our theological textbook. This is our manual for living. This is how we live this Christian life, is this book. So we have to... Go to this book to understand Jesus Christ, to get the truth. Because this book is truth. John 17, 17. The Bible is truth. Aletheia. It is uh, reality. It is genuine. It is not false. So the purpose and the mission of Jesus. Right in the beginning pages of the Bible. When you go to Genesis 3.15, it's what we call the Proto-Evangelicum. This is <clears throat> excuse me, the first gospel. This is the first mention of what is called the seed. The seed of the woman, which we later know is the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. The seed is going to come, and the seed is going to crush the head of the serpent. So here we have this promised seed, this Messiah, this one who is always going to sit on the throne of David, this one who is the focal point of the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Savior. <clears throat> Luke 19.10 says, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The perfect tense in the Greek there. Those who are in a continual state of lostness. They were lost in the past because of sin and presently they're still lost. And we talk about the religious loss, the secular loss, the hardcore loss, and the Christian loss. Those who put on the facade, they carry their Bibles, they wear the, they wear the Christian clothes, but deep down in reality they are lost. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus Christ is and was God's rescue mission for man. He came to reconcile God to man. He came to make us friends again. We're no longer God's enemies. God is no longer mad at us. John 3, 36. We're no longer under the umbrella of God's wrath. This was the very purpose for which Jesus was sent by God. Even his name gives his destiny. Jesus means God saves. He will save his people from their sin. So that great work of God through which Jesus Christ would seek to reconcile man back to himself. Jesus is God's rescue mission. John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word the word was with God, and the word was indeed God. Jesus was God in human flesh. Jesus was flesh. He was a man, 100% uh, 
divine, 100% human. We beheld his glory. Jesus was the perfect, sinless lamb of God. He died a real, sacrificial, painful death. He did so in submission to the will of God, which was the plan for his life. Why did Jesus need to die? What was his purpose? Why was this, why was the death of Christ on the cross in the purpose of God? Well, it was God's way of opening up a way to, for us to get to him. It was a way of God reversing the effects of Adam's fall. Because sin required sacrifice. Sin always requires blood. So, Jesus Christ offered up his precious, sinless blood, valuable blood for us. He is our atonement. He appeased the wrath of God. Jesus Christ was totally unique in the fact that he was without sin. He is the only begotten of the Father. The wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead because he had no personal transgressions. How do you know that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice? He raised him from the dead. We inherited our sinful nature from Adam. When Adam sinned, original sin. But because of the work of Christ on the cross, because of his purpose, because of his plan, we now get the righteousness of God on us. It is imputed into us. It is placed into our account, which was at one point negative. Jesus fulfilled it. He overpaid our sin debt. He was a propitiation through faith in his blood. Jesus Christ. So we have to ask ourselves, do I have faith in the work of God? Do I have faith in the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ? Jesus took on Flesh. The Bible also teaches us that Jesus was the mediator between God and man. He bargained for us. He was our broker. We were sinful. We were in debt. Jesus brokered the relationship between us and God. We were a client. God was our patron. He gave us divine favors. And in return, we worship him. We live for him. We have eternal life because of what Christ did for us. That promised seed all the way back in Genesis 3, 15 was in God's purpose from the beginning. It was Jesus Christ was slain before the foundations of the world. Before you even sinned, Jesus Christ in God's mind was slain for you. God, Jesus is now opening up the way of God's kingdom here on earth. We have eternal life. We get to live with God and Christ forever. Forever. Jesus Christ was not, he was God, but he was not God. They are separate persons in the Trinity. And you can learn more about that in your uh, systematic theology classes uh, to get more in-depth knowledge of that. Because uh, it would take more time than we have here on this video to talk about those things. But also, Jesus Christ was a man. Jesus Christ was revealed as a man. He was the son of God. He had our nature, but without sin. There is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. 
Hebrews 2.14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Christ also himself took part of the same. He took on flesh so that he can destroy the power of death and destroy Satan. Hebrews 2.17 Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. For that he himself suffered being tempted, he is able to secure aid to them who are tempted. Remember this, write this down. Jesus Christ had to become like us to save us. He was in all points tempted like we are, but without sin. Jesus was tempted, yet without sin. No sin. That was his purpose. His purpose was to die. Jesus Christ was born to die. He was born in a manger, a feeding trough, because he is the bread of life. Now, Jesus came to die to be an atoning sacrifice, to restore us to God. Now we have to look at his sacrifice. Because Jesus lived a life of complete obedience, which is something we should do. We should be completely obedient to God, completely obedient to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. God raised Jesus Christ up from the dead three days later. We have hope because of what Christ did on the cross. There is salvation in none other, for there is no other name under heaven given unto man whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 And if Christ is not raised from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15, 17, your faith is in vain. It's worthless. Throw it away. Because we are still in our sins. If Christ did not die and was raised from the dead, it's worthless. We can just throw it in the trash because our sins have not been paid for. We're still dead in our sins. If we were to die, we would be separated from God in an eternal hell. Christ then is our representative. He is our substitute. Substitute. Christ is our substitute. He is the only one who performed God's will perfectly. He's the only one that we should seek to follow. He is our rabbi, our didaskalos, our teacher. We are his students, his mathetes, mathetai. We are his learners, his apprentices. We have to believe in and associate ourselves with his work so that our sins can be Forgiven in our nature, restored. John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Christ paid the ultimate price. He sacrificed himself so that we might have opportunity to associate with what he has done. For God made him to be sin for us, a sin offering for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ became our sin offering. Next, the purpose of Jesus Christ. When you think about these and just meditate on them, relish in his love 
Jesus Christ is the Savior. This is his name, his title, his position, who he is. It is through what Christ accomplished with his life and his death that we have the opportunity to be saved. His name means Savior, and that's exactly what he does. Don't let the world tell you any differently. The Jesus Christ that we love, serve, worship, follow, obey, who is in this book, died to become our Savior. He is the Savior of the world. Luke 2, 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Him hath God exalted to his right hand to be a prince and a Savior. To, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Acts 5.31 How does Jesus save us? Through salvation from sin. That's his work. That's what he does. He saves. God saves. The righteous judge. Because of this resurrection and glorification, Jesus has a very high position. He has been given the power to judge mankind. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man with whom he ordained, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, he hath given assurance to all men that he will raise them from the dead. Acts 17.31 Jesus Christ commanded us to preach unto the people, to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. You see, brothers and sisters, when we die, when we leave this earth, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. There's no limbo as they teach, none of that stuff, purgatory. When you die, if you're saved, you're immediately into the presence of God forever. If you die unsaved, you're immediately into hell. Eternal damnation. Eternal suffering. Eternal separation from God. You can't get back to God. It's too late when we die. It's too late because God gave Jesus the position of judge he is the righteous judge read john chapter 5 in its entirety and it will show you that he is the righteous judge and the future king of the kingdom of god and on earth jesus christ is the judge he's the high priest he's the savior he's the lamb of god and now he will be the king the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The biblical Jesus is very different than the Jesus a lot of people believe in and a lot of different religions teach. Jesus Christ is the sinless Lamb of God sent to die on a cross for us. He's coming back in great Glory, Revelation 19. He's coming back with ten thousands of his saints. He's coming back to judge. Are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? His purpose and his first coming was to open the door to God for salvation. His purpose and his second coming is to establish the kingdom of God fully on this earth. And he will be the judge. You and I have to stand before God and give an account for our lives. And the only thing that matters, it doesn't matter how many times you read the Bible. It doesn't matter how many orphans you fed. How many houses you built. How many prayers you prayed. The only thing that matters is what did you do? 
with the Son of God? Did you appropriate his works on the cross? Did you accept him for his rescue mission to seek and to save that which is lost? And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I plead with you right now to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless you.